Good morning students. Today we will discuss about the remaining part related with the anatomy of the cavernous sinus. In the previous lecture, we had discussed about the general introduction of the cranial venous sinuses, the types of cranial venous sinuses, the different types. Then we started with the cavernous sinuses, we had discussed the location, the extension of the cavernous sinus. Today we will talk about the remaining part. So relations of the cavernous sinus are very important. It is in relation with uh, many important structures. So superiorly on the superior aspect, this is cavernous sinus, on superiorly it is related with internal carotid artery, optic chiasma, optic tract. On the medial side, it is related with the hypophysis cerebri, that is the pituitary gland and the sphenoidal sinus. Inferiorly, below this cavernous sinus, there is foramen lacerum. Laterally, on the lateral side, the cavernous sinus is related with the temporal lobe of the brain. The lateral wall of the sinus has some important structures within it from above downwards, that is the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve, the ophthalmic nerve, the maxillary nerve and it also is related with the internal carotid artery and also the abducent nerve. Tributaries of the cavernous sinus, so the veins that drain into the cavernous sinus are the the veins, three veins from the orbit are superior ophthalmic vein, inferior ophthalmic vein either directly drains into the cavernous sinus or gives branches that drain into the cavernous sinus. Central vein of retina directly, either it directly drains or it drains into the superior ophthalmic vein and then into the cavernous sinus. So in this figure, the various tributaries, as you can see here, this is the superior ophthalmic vein draining into the cavernous sinus. This is the inferior ophthalmic vein draining into the cavernous sinus. This is a figure uh, where you can see tributaries from different sources, that is orbit, meninges, brain, coming and draining into these cavernous sinuses. Between the two cavernous sinus, you have the anterior and the posterior intercavernous sinuses. So the tributaries from brain are superficial middle cerebral vein, inferior cerebral veins. From meninges, there is sphenoparietal sinus and middle meningeal vein, especially the frontal trunk of the middle meningeal vein. Communications of the sinus. So the cavernous sinus, it communicates with the transverse sinus through the superior petrosal sinus. So these are the transverse sinus on both sides. And this cavernous sinus is communicating with this transverse sinus with the help of superior petrosal sinus. So these different sinus inside the cranial cavity are intercommunicated. It is also connected with the internal jugular vein through the inferior petrosal sinus. Inferior petrosal sinus connects the cavernous sinus to the internal jugular vein. Also, the pterygoid plexus is connected with the cavernous sinus through the help of emissary veins. The facial vein is also connected through the superior ophthalmic vein. And the right and left cavernous sinus, they are connected with the help of anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus. And also through the basilar plexus of veins. 
so superior petrosal connects it with the transverse sinus inferior petrosal connects it, connect it with the internal jugular emissary veins connected with the pterygoid plexus both the cavernous sinus are connected by anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus and the basilar plexus of veins these communications are also responsible for transferring any infection through these connections can transfer to the cavernous sinus This, this is showing the orbital tributaries uh, that are coming to the cavernous sinus, the superior ophthalmic, the central retinal and the inferior ophthalmic. Superior, central retinal and inferior ophthalmic are coming to the cavernous sinus. The factors, there are certain factors that are responsible for the expulsion of blood from the sinuses. Those factors are the expensile pulsation of the internal carotid. So you can see uh, the location of internal carotid with the cavernous sinus. Because of that relation, the pulsation of the artery also helps in the expulsion of blood from the sinuses. Also the factor is gravity and the position of the head. Now clinically, thrombosis can happen in the cavernous sinus and it is due to the causes sepsis either in the dangerous area of face or the nasal cavity or the paranasal sinuses. So the infection because of the communication through these areas can transfer to the cavernous sinus and lead to thrombosis. If there is thrombosis there are various type of symptoms. So the neurological symptoms the nervous symptoms are it affects the ophthalmic nerve because it is closely related to the sinus. So the distribution, the area that is distributed by the ophthalmic nerve, that is the eye and the forehead, they will be a severe pain. Also third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves would be involved because they are also related to the cavernous sinus. And as these nerves, they are supplying the extraocular muscles as well as certain other muscles so there could be paralysis of the muscles that these nerves supply and thereby their action is affected like in the case of extraocular the movement of the eyeballs is affected apart from neurological symptoms some venous symptoms could be there that is severe edema of the lids cornea root of nose and due to the congestion, excessive congestion of the orbital veins, there could be exophthalmus. So, we come to an end about the anatomy of cavernous sinus. Thank you so much.